Good morning, Waterloo League Church Family Backyard Worship. Welcome. I'm Pastor Brian. Glad you joined to be with us today as we get to worship the Lord together in the backyard. Oh man, I am geeked about today's sermon. It is going to be awesome, and God's going to be with us, and the worship is going to be good. And so let's just open our hearts as we uh, begin today morning worship. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you. We get to gather together and worship you, and that's the best thing, man. We can set aside the craziness of the week and all the trouble we had and all the things that's on the schedule next week, and we can just focus on you today. So, Father, we pray that you'd open our hearts, that we would uh, be, be still before you. Let your Holy Spirit speak to us as we dive into holiness. You call us to be holy. So, Father, we want to be what you want us to be, and that's holy. So help us, Father, today to grab hold of, get a glimpse of holiness as we draw close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Harry?
This is an old hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. So glad that you're with us today. Morning offering and tithes and offerings. There's a box, a mailbox on the tree. You can make a donation there uh, for your tithes and offerings or towards the building fund as well. Uh, speaking of money coming in, uh, the conference, the Free Methodist Conference in Southern Michigan uh, sent me a nice check for thousands of dollars uh, so we can do some acoustical panels in the multi-purpose area, help with the sound and some other th little projects that need to be finished up. So we thank you for the conference for being g d generous and donating towards the building fund as we continue to move forward. Sunday school on Sunday morning, pick a ball on Thursday night. Uh, if you've never been baptized or like some information about being baptized, see me August the 14th after morning worship. We're planning on doing baptism down at the river and uh, see me, I can get you information about that as well. This Saturday is uh, Bob Dean's uh, funeral at 6.30. 6.30 at night here at the church. The viewing is on Friday uh, in Benton Harbor, but the funeral itself is here at 6.30 on Saturday. Uh, Miss Kim, will you raise your hand? Miss Kim, see her. Uh, she needs help with getting some desserts, cookies, pies, cakes, and things like that. Bob had a sweet tooth. And so in honor of Bob, we're going to do sweets for the family and friends that gather uh, for the funeral on Saturday. I want to do a... A community service announcement as well. Uh, August the 2nd, great time to vote. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm just going to encourage you to vote. Okay? Encourage you to vote. Get out and vote. Let everyone know. It went away. It went away. I don't want to be there. It's Perry's mic. Perry, I didn't do anything. <laughs> 
I was just talking. There he goes. Here it comes back. You back on? Yes. Okay. Hey, so I just want to encourage you get out and vote. Get out and vote and uh, do, do right. Get out and vote for sure. If you have your bulletins on the front of the inside cover of the bulletin, inside cover, uh, the front, I'm, the outside cover, I should say, the outside cover of the bulletin, uh, it gives a definition of a disciple. I want to read it together if we could. Everybody have it in front of them? A disciple of Jesus is a learner. One more time. A disciple of Jesus is a learner. Learning to love like Jesus, walk like Jesus, live like Jesus, and be like Jesus to others. We're going to take this time to just to draw near to God and ask Him to give us clean hands and clean hearts. We bow our hearts. We bend our knees. We bend our knees. Oh Spirit, make us humble. Oh Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes. We turn our eyes from evil things. From evil things. Oh Lord, we cast down our idols. So give us clean hands. Give us clean hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Oh, give us. Let me 
our life, our love. We give it to you, Father. We lay it down at your feet because we love you. We worship you. We are grateful that you loved us. Thank you, Father. Father, I, I do pray that we would get out and vote on August 2nd. We'd vote our conscience. We'd vote what we believe and support those people. Help us to do that, Father. Father, I pray for those that are grieving loss of loved ones, whether it's the Dean family or other families in our community. Father, that you would allow us to minister to them, that you would come alongside them and love them and care for them during this time. Father, I pray for Don's dad and uh, that you would just be in that situation as he's on a ventilator now and they don't know what to do, but Father, you know, you got a plan. I pray that you be with the family, work out all the details and all the things that are involved there, Father. Father, that you would uh, just come alongside of those that are hurt and sick and suffering. We thank you that Joanne's with us today, walking on crutches, but she's up and walking. So thank you, Father, for that. And Father, we just pray that you'd be with those that are just going through tough times of life. Maybe it's relationships, maybe it's a marriage, maybe it's a transition of life and trying to figure out what's next. Father, that you'd walk with them, carry them and encourage them and strengthen them day by day. Be with our men and women that serve around the world so we can worship in freedom. Be with our missionaries as they share the good news of the gospel. And Father, be with us this morning that you would speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. The kids can be dismissed with Miss Cindy. I don't know how this is going to work with me having to stand still. No. If it stops, just stand up. Wave your hands. We've been working through a series on uh, what a disciple is, and we printed it in the front of the bulletin. A disciple is a learner, uh, learning to love and to walk like Jesus and live like Jesus and to be like Jesus to those around us. That's what it's all about. And we're walking through some incredible characteristics uh, of a disciple, loving and giving and forgiving and uh, making the most of every opportunity. And don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. And uh, a disciple is driven by Jesus. And these are all sermons that we've worked on and walked through. A disciple needs a place to grow, uh, a church family. And we know that we're drifting when we stop gathering together and start isolating ourselves. A disciple digs deep into the Word of God and grows, learns, needs other people as well. We start off with milk, and then we dive into solid food, and as we mature, we want more and more of God and more of His Word, and today's one of those days that we're going to get some more and more of God's Word. A disciple learns how to handle temptation, not giving in to temptation. Uh, being, when temptation comes, be like Jesus in quoting Scripture or believing the promises that God has given us and being faithful, that He is faithful, and calling on God in prayer. A disciple is a learner. As we learn, the disciples a missionary, and our missionaries came, uh, the Rosados came and shared, we are to gather together and for word of encouragement and strength and encourage one another and learning the word, and then we're to scatter to take off and share the good news that we learn together. Scatter, gather, and scatter together. And then last week, Eric reminded us that we need to be multipliers, multipliers of grace, love, joy, peace, mercy to other people. Today I want to talk about living a holy life. Living a holy life. We are called through the Word of God all the way back to the book of Leviticus to live holy lives. We are called. Some would say commanded. Some would say suggested. Some would say just do it. We are called to live holy lives. There are lots of scriptures throughout the Bible calling us to do this. And I'm not even going to cover all 30 of them. Or I think there's even more than that. I'm not going to cover all of them. We'll cover some. Just so you get a flavor of what we're called to be. As disciples of Jesus, we're called to be. Where did we start off? We all started off in sin. Did you? I did. Didn't we all start off? The Bible says that we all started in sinful nature. 
We all started following sin. We all gave in to sin in our lives. We all have been there. We all have done that. Before we gave our heart to Jesus, before we said yes to Jesus, before I said, I love you, Jesus, we were sinners. We were all sinners. Sin was our master. Sin controlled us. We might not have thought about it that way, but really, sin controlled us. Sin took us wherever sin wanted to take us. And we just gave in because we thought that was the right way. So we just went along with whatever was going on. If you were an alcoholic, for example, I don't know if anybody is struggling with that today. But if you were an alcoholic, uh, you are controlled by alcohol. Okay? Uh, you think about your next drink. You wonder where you're going to get the money for it. You try to figure out how to get it. You try to figure out... Uh, how to lie about where you might be because you shouldn't be where you are, or you even worry about not getting stopped by the cops on the way home because you might be drunk and all those things. And alcohol controls you if you're an alcoholic. It controls your relationships. It will affect your job. It will affect your home. It will affect your community. It will affect who you are. It might even affect if you can drive or not. Alcohol will cost you money. And the list just goes on and on. That is being controlled by sin. And that's just one. And there's many other addictions. So I'm not, don't just think of this about alcohol or anything like that. Uh, there's other addictions like drugs, sex, workaholic, gambling, social media. I mean, the list could just go on and on. You, you fill in the blank. But the real addiction is sin. See, that's what we're really addicted to is sin. But no matter what the other labels are, the real addiction is sin, is what we become addicted to. If you have your Bibles, look with me at Romans chapter 6. I printed some of it in the bulletin, but not all of it. <laughs> Romans chapter 6. The writer of Romans, he's helping us understand uh, they were very aware what a slave was. They knew what a slave did. They knew what a slave, how they lived and they, how they were controlled. And so he uses this example so they would understand. So I think we can figure it out here. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Don't you realize that you have become to slave whatever you choose to obey? Whatever you choose to obey, you become a slave to it. You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death. Or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living or holy living. Verse 17, thank God. Once we were slaves to sin. That's us. All of us, we're all slaves to sin. But now you wholeheartedly obey the teachings that we have given you. Now you are free from the slavery of sin, and now you become righteous living, holy living. You once were slaves to sin, now you choose to live for God. We were all once Sinners, saved by grace. The word of God says that. We are, we are all sinners. Has sin mastered you? Is sin still mastering you in different areas of your life? We get to choose whether we can still live in sin or choose to live for God. We get to choose. We can give in to sin, give in to that addiction. We can go down that road, or we can choose to live wholeheartedly for Jesus. We can turn away from our sins. No longer give in to the sin we get to choose whether we want to live a holy life or a sinful filled life it's really pretty simple the writer goes on Romans chapter 6 verse 19 because of our weakness because of our human nature because we're not strong enough on our own I'm using this illustration of slavery to help you understand all of this previously you let yourself be a slave to the impure and lawlessness which led to deeper into sin now 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 you know now you must give yourself to be a slave to righteousness living so you will be holy so you will become holy now now you get to choose when you're a slave to sin you're obligated to do that now you can turn away from that verse uh, 22 but now you are free from the power of sin and have become a slave to god now you do the things that lead to holiness and the result is eternal life now you get to do those things that lead to holiness and that is eternal life for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life romans 6 23 now 
We can't serve two masters. Jesus told us that back in Matthew. We'll either serve, love one and hate the other. You can't serve two masters. But now you get to choose. Now you get a choice in the matter. Now you can choose to live a life of holiness, which leads to eternal life with Jesus. Jesus broke the power of sin on the cross, shedding his blood for us. And all we have to do is accept that gift, say, Jesus, I want that gift. I don't want to go and live for sin anymore. I want to become a new child of the King of kings and Lord of lords. I want a new life in him. I want to give my life to him. What are those things that lead to holiness? Is usually the question that I ponder with. It's when we wholeheartedly follow Jesus. That leads to holiness. When we're all in. When we live obedient. When we apply God's grace and love to our lives. Ephesians, Paul writes in Ephesians 4, throw off, get rid of all those sinful nature that so easily entangles us. It's like getting caught in seaweed out on the lake. Throw away, get rid of all that stuff. Verse 23, instead, let the Spirit renew your mind and thoughts, your attitudes. Let the Spirit work in your heart and life. Hebrews says it like this, we are to be holy without holiness, we'll never see the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1, finally, dear brothers and sisters, I urge you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to live a way that pleases God. How are we to live our lives? A way that pleases God. How are we to live our lives? The way that pleases God. That's what we're supposed to do. The way that pleases God. The way that we've taught you. And keep on doing it even more. Verse 3, God's will is for you. Here you go. Someone says, hey, I don't know what God's will is. Right here it tells us, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, verse 3. God's will for you and for me is to be holy. That's God's will for our lives. That's what we're called. That's what he wants for us. So stay away from sexual immorality. Uh, the, the people at uh, Thessalonica were struggling with this. They obviously were because Paul hits it head on. Each of you know how to control your own body. Live in holiness, honor, not the lustful passions of the pagans. Never harm or cheat a brother. He goes on, verse 7, God has called you to live holy lives, not immoral lives. God is calling us. He's called us from the Old Testament all the way through the New Testament to live holy lives, godly lives, holy lives, godly lives. How do we do that? I think it's pretty practical. Part of sanctification is another word that we use oftentimes when we talk about holiness. Sanctification has a two part to it. The first part is we cease doing evil. And the second part is that we learn to live holy lives. So the first part is we got to get rid of sin. We got to stop doing it. We, we got to stop giving in to the sin. We have to break away from those addictions, those things that suck us in, those things that walk us down that trap, that trail that we get into a pitfall. And next thing you know, we're just in full blown sin because we gave into a little bit, to a little bit, to a little bit, and it just keeps going. We got to stop that. Satan knows how to trick us. Satan knows how to lure us in. Satan knows our buttons and what your temptation is and what level those things are. Satan knows all those things, and he knows how to lure you in on that. We have to break those unholy cycles in our lives. Number two, learn to live a holy life. Just doing it. Deciding that I'm going to live for the Father above. Not for myself, not for anyone else. As we grow, we strive to live a holy life, pleasing to God, learning He has called us to live a holy life, which leads to eternal life, free from sin and shame and guilt, learning what God's calling us to be holy. And it looks different for everybody. You're at a different place than I'm at. You're at a different stage of your life than I'm at. You're dealing with different things than I am. But God is calling us to be holy. And I want to talk about that today so we understand what holiness looks like. I have a couple examples. If the shoe fits, confess. Fair enough? If the shoe fits, confess. Holiness, I believe, shows up in the little things. Okay? You ready? Here's, here, here's the first one. Your spouse asks you how much money you spent at the store. Don't look at your spouse. Look at me. I don't want no one throwing anything. And we respond... Just over $50. 
because 75 sounds too much. So we just stretch it a little bit. I was truthful, Ken. He's got a grin on his face. I only spent over $50, just a little, little bit. But the truth is, is really 75. See, holiness shows up in just the little things, telling the truth. Uh, where were you the other night? Well, our answer is, oh, I was hanging out with some friends. The reality was, well, I went to my friend's house, and then we went out to the store, and then we ran to Silver Beach, and then we hung out here, and then we went out and did something else that I really can't talk about. But I was at my friend's house. See, we just stretch it just a little bit. We told some of the truth, but not all of it. See, holiness goes all in. That's what holiness is really about. Did you get your license plate on your car this year? Or did you just let it run out and just, you know, it's COVID, so they really don't check that stuff anymore, right? See, holiness says you take care of business. Did you claim all your earnings on your taxes last year? Don, don't look around. <laughs> Have you been watching some music, watching some videos or listening to music that has full of violence? Sexual language, videos, music, movies. What about those friends we're hanging out with? I know their language is a little salty. I know they do a little bit of smoking and a little bit of drinking and a little bit of drugs. And they do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But really, they're good people. Holiness. Holiness. Did you get that building permit for that little add-on you did on the back of your house? No one ever sees it, but it's okay. See, holiness calls on us. The Holy Spirit speaks to our heart, points out those little things. See, so often, I don't even want to use this last example. I better just use it since I wrote it down. How many of us set our crews at 80 miles an hour knowing that the speed limit's 70? See, holiness. Are we living holy lives? No, we push the edge. We push the edge. How far can I go and not get caught? And I'm saying, how close can I get to God? Versus how far I can go and not get caught. See, holiness. Holiness takes the gray areas out of our lives. It takes them out of my life, I know. We should be looking towards Jesus, not away from Jesus. We should be drawing close to Jesus, not the things away from him. You see, the Holy Spirit speaks to us through the word of God. He speaks through our conscience, through the Holy Spirit. Hey, come on, you know you know that ain't the right answer. You, you know you're scamming on that. You know, you know. The Holy Spirit helps us with that. And then loving brothers and sisters come around and say, hey, I, I heard this or I saw this. And can we just clarify what's going on? I love you so much to let you go down that road. See, holiness. I have an example for you. I think everyone here today, I, I think I know most of you, uh, everyone here today would say that uh, I should not sleep with another man's wife, right? Every, everyone would agree with that. It's, it's, you know, it says that in the Bible, doesn't it? Let's see, uh, Exodus 20 is one of the Ten Commandments, number seven, if you want to look it up. Uh, Thou shalt not commit adultery. We, we, we see that. We know that. We would all agree with that, right? We would all agree with that. Well, Jesus takes that Ten Commandments, and, number seven, and he says, even if I look at a woman with lust in my eyes, I've committed adultery in my heart. So he takes it even a step farther. So the, the black and white area is do not commit adultery. We're all good with that. We all agree with that. But can I go out to dinner with that beautiful babe? That's not my wife. True story. I, I don't know if we were dating. I think we we're just dating. Cindy's not here to clarify this, is she? Um, I think we we're just dating. And uh, one of my old girlfriends called me and said, hey, let's grab lunch and catch up. Okay. So I went and had lunch with her. I, we might have even been married for all I know. And I came home and I told her all about lunch. I was so naive and dumbfounded, I didn't realize. And, and Cindy, like, she, like, got ballistic.
See, sometimes we don't know any better, but most of the time we really do know better. So often we say just a little bit is no big deal. A little bit won't hurt us. I can recover from a little bit. I have an example I want to use today. Uh, Tyson, you like brownies? Come here. Come here, Tyson. Perfect. I have some brownies, Tyson. They weren't made from this brownie mix, but it's close enough. And you know what? You take this box and you mix it to together, and it says you add three tablespoons of water and a half cup of vegetable, sand right over here, uh, and two eggs. You mix them together. But you know what? On the bottom of the box, did you know this, Tyson? On the bottom, look, it's right here. On the bottom box, you can make brownies that are salty, crunchy by adding potato chips or pretzels. Never knew that. It goes on. You can add fruit, dried cherries or cranberry or coconut to the brownies to make it more fruity tasting. Did you know that? Did you know that you can add more chocolate? This you knew because grandma does this. You can add more chocolate chips to make it more tasty, right? So it'd be okay to add a little bit to the brownie mix, right? Okay. I have uh, two brownies that are already made up, okay? But I just added a little bit to them, okay? Okay? We want to be sanitized. We don't want any getting food poisoning or anything. So I'm going to put gloves on just to be safe, Tyson. I, you know, I don't want you to get sick or anything, okay? Uh, a friend of mine brought me some samples. Man, that's huge. From his dog. Will you hold this for me? We're just going to take a little bit of this and mix it in with the brownies. Okay? See, that's what we do. We take a little bit of sin, we mix it in and say, it's all good. Tyson, what's wrong? The question is, Tyson, I have two brownies, one on a blue plate, one on a red plate. One is mixed just right for you, baby. Do you want to pick or do you want me to pick? You'd rather me pick. See, when we ask God to help us versus us picking the sin, he knows what's best for us. He knows exactly what's best. He knows which brownie just has a little bit extra flavor in it. And so often, we don't ask God. We just grab it and take it. See, that's where holiness comes into play. I think I wrote it down. <laughs> I think, I think this is it, Tyson. Thank you, Tyson. No, no. If you don't want it, I'll eat it. See, we laugh. And we say we'd never eat that brownie with a little bit of, uh, what's the dog's name? What? Heath. Heath. A little bit of Heath in it. That's not Heath candy bar, though, is it? But see, that's what we do with sin. We think a little bit, it's okay. It really won't hurt me. God calls us to be holy. Don't add anything else to what's pure and holy. God calls us to be holy in all that we do. And like I said, this goes all the way back to Leviticus. I mean, he called the children of Israel to be holy people, set apart, different. This isn't a new thing. God is still calling us today to live according to the word of God, to his standards, not the world's standards, not what everyone else says is okay, but what does God say oh, is okay for me? What's okay for me? 
Once we accept Jesus into our hearts and our lives, and we're free from sin, we need to start living a holy life. That's the next step. Living according to the things of God. In your notes in the bulletin, it raises a question. I want to take a minute right now. I want you to answer this question for me. What's one thing that seems like no big deal? Just It's just a little bit that the Holy Spirit is pointing out in your life that you need to take care of, that you need to make a correction on. Let's just pause for a moment. What is it that the Holy Spirit is pointing out? I need to take care of this. This ain't right. This isn't true holiness. I've been scamming myself or scamming others or whatever the issue may be. I need to do something to make it right. I need to make a commitment. I need to stop doing this and start doing that. I need to be honest. I need to put away this addiction of my life. What is the Holy Spirit pointing out for you today that you need to take care of? Father, we want to be holy people. We want to see and smell the stink, the little bit sin, and run from it. We want you to point out in our lives those things that we need to correct, take care of. Because of just a little bit is not good. It's not good. Father, we want to be holy people. You call us to be holy people to present ourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you, which is our reasonable act of service, it says in Romans 12. So, Father, that's what we want to do. You call us to be holy. A disciple of Jesus is holy. So help us, Father, to live holy lives, to get rid of those things that you pointed out in our hearts and lives today so we could take another step closer to you. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. The worship team has a song for us uh, to finish up. Uh, let's stand together and join in the song, Holiness is What I Earn For. Holiness is What I Want.
and serve the Lord today. Why?